Okay, YouTube video diaries. Section six or eight, I don't know. I'm gonna try a walk and talk here. Excuse my deep out of breath, but I'm feeling inspired to talk about something that I am learning more and more, and that is the practice of inner responsibility. So responsibility, we tend to think of as things outside of ourselves, uh, of which we have many uh, things to tend to, people to take care of and respond to, um, work, social, life, all of these things in our external world that we consider our responsibilities. And yet there's a whole nother plane of existence of responsibility for our inner worlds. That I'm really starting to dig more deeply into as I do the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza and doing some uh, healing work for some of the, the patterns that come up in my relationship where I put a lot of the responsibility for my feelings, my inner state of my partner. I'm starting to, I'm continuing to come back to this invitation to take responsibility for the world inside of myself and how vital that is to my health, well-being, happiness, joy, love, and uh, my resiliency, my ability to deal with suffering. I've had a lot of ass-kicking injuries and emotional pain, um, heartbreak over the past few years, and it's really sent me into uh, an exploration of how to suffer less, how to suffer better, and how to, you know, take responsibility for the shit that I do to get in my own way to cause myself to suffer when I don't need to. And so it brings me to this concept of inner responsibility. And in a world where we're so used to putting ourselves outside of ourselves, you know, and our labels and our uh, qualifications and the, you know, the achievements that we rack up and our social status and our, uh, you know, looks and our things, we uh, tend to look to the outside world for far too much of our uh, life and living when the reality is that there is so much of it, if not really all of it, is stemming from our inner world. And so um, to take inner responsibility, I think ultimately will lead to, as one who has honestly avoided responsibility for much of his, you know, his life thus far, well, up until now, I'm taking responsibility now, um, I do believe that as I take more responsibility for my inner world, it's so much easier to grapple with the responsibility in the outside world and less draining and exhausting, in fact, joyful and fun and uh, prove skillful as I navigate and solve problems in this fun and creative way because I'm learning how much of it is sourced from my self within. And so... Yeah, the encouragement, I suppose, at the end of this as I kind of end the, the planned part of the ramble. No, this was planned, but uh, I guess the point that I would want to, you know, make is we got to take responsibility for ourselves, for our thoughts, for our emotions, for our pain, for our happiness. Um, happiness is an inside job, and so are all of those other qualities and I think we live in a world that you know conditioned and unconscious ends up with a bunch of self-perpetuating patterns um, and we're disempowered to our capacity to take responsibility for and ultimately change our inner state uh, to our benefit so what I'm saying is a lot of us because of our wounds and the way that we're trained I should go left here the way that we're trained by our society, we cause ourselves a lot of pain. We wreck a lot of havoc through the rumination of the same thought patterns and the same emotional states 
that get us to the same outcome in life. And we wonder why nothing's changing. And many of us look for a long time to the outside world to fix it. You know, the next program or, you know, diet culture as a physical change for weight loss is such a manifestation of the bullshit of looking outside of ourselves to fix what really is an inside job. And hopefully, uh, you know, through trial and error, we realize that uh, no one outside of ourselves, nothing outside of ourselves can fix us. Uh, it's an inside job. And so we got to come home to ourselves and take radical responsibility for radically accepting and loving ourselves and for choosing to be open to and willing to learn how to grow and manifest healthy change within ourselves in a forward moving direction or at least one that is positive and not just a self-fulfilling vicious cycle that we often get stuck in. So how do we take responsibility for ourselves? How do we cultivate this inner responsibility? Well, it starts with mindfulness. You have no power without awareness. Awareness is, well, I'm not even gonna throw a fraction out there, but you could say awareness is half the battle uh, because these patterns are unlocked, you know? And if anybody has ever become aware of their triggers around their parents and seen how uh, quickly they pop up without any say from your conscious awareness, um, you'll know that our patterns are deeply entrenched in us. And so um, it takes awareness to, an awareness practice and a building of that awareness to start to create some space and understanding and room for acceptance and love of those patterns. And then we have to empower ourselves to change, to choose something different. You know, they talk about neuroplasticity a lot as the neurological, the physical manifestation of change. We have uh, conscious control over that in the moments where we become aware of a pattern coming up and, you know, let's say for example, a, a tendency to ruminate, worry about something that's coming up. And I do this all the fucking time. Like I'm, I get so silly anxious about bullshit, nothing things that, that really should have no uh, hold over me, but it's just a pattern and I get stuck in it and I worry and I overthink and I control and I think and think and think and think and it gets me nowhere, but it just drained my energy. And so in the moment when I recognize that that's happening and it's taken time to build the awareness, um, these neural networks that have been firing for 31 years or less, they're, they're pretty strong. So in that moment of mindfulness, of awareness, where you pause and take a look at what's happening in yourself, in your inner world, and you say, oh, I'm going to do something different, something different. And you choose something different. And you create a new neural network, a new neural pathway that then through practice, and life is practice. If you want to live an awesome fucking life, you got to be committed to the concept of practice because nothing happens overnight. No one swishes 10 free throws in a row the first time they ever shoot a basketball. They have to miss many, many times before they start to get it down and they start to get the the kinesthetic training and the mindfulness around it and the, and the centeredness and the groundedness. Like that takes time. So life is practice. And so when we say, I'm going to take responsibility for my inner world, for the shit that I do to cause myself more pain and suffering. Because ultimately, no one really outside of ourselves, okay, I take that back, because there, are, there is a lot of trauma and war and disgusting evil in the world. And so separate from that, we cause ourselves a lot of pain and suffering. A lot more than we think is coming from the outside world is actually coming from our own self-defeating patterns. And so when I say we gotta take in a responsibility, I mean, we need to pause with awareness and mindfulness in that moment and recognize, wow, this really hardwired neural pathway is firing and it's been firing for a long time. And what happens as a result from this rumination? I just feel shittier. So I'm gonna do something different in this moment. I'm gonna choose 
to think, what if? What if it all went right? Or maybe I'm going to take a deep breath or come into my, and come into my body instead of thinking. Or I'm going to choose a healthy coping mechanism like listening to music and dancing or going for a swim or whatever floats your boat to create a new response to whatever the trigger was that triggered this anxiety. And that's a whole part of the equation that we have to become mindful of is like what triggers these patterns in ourselves. But it's that choice then to do something different, to do something that actually fills us up and encourages our well-being and we can live infinitely joyous and potent lives as a result of this small moment compounded over many, many moments of practice throughout a lifetime. And it gets easier because as you start to choose in that moment, the new neural pathway starts to get, um, it's like a snowball, you know, it's going down the hill. And as we choose it, 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 it becomes exponentially easier to make that choice. And, and at a certain point it becomes habit even to choose instead of responding to something happening in your life in a couple of days with rumination and anxiety and worry and planning and analyzing, we respond with trust and peace and presence and staying in our body and knowing that it's all going to work out and recognizing, yeah, hey, there might be some things that could go wrong. Um, I'm very capable of problem solving. And um, yeah, I don't want to, I'm, I'm taking responsibility for myself. And I recognize that if I sit here and bitch and moan in my head, I'm just creating more pain for myself. And so inner responsibility is that intention to start that process, to, to recognize that you, more than anyone in the world, have the capacity, the responsibility, and the ability, apologize for my redundancy, which I do with my double, triple synonym phrases, you alone are responsible for your happiness. Other people, other things are sprinkles, no doubt, but like you bake the cake. And the only way you can bake the cake is if you realize that you're the baker and you say, all right, I gotta get the ingredients together. I gotta practice. I'm gonna have to go through some trial runs. I'm gonna fuck up a bunch. I'm gonna do some of my old shitty baking techniques a couple times on accident. And I'm like, yeah, this doesn't work. I try something new. Like you, you, gotta, you gotta decide that you're gonna bake this damn cake and you're gonna take responsibility for yourself. And it opens up all the fucking doors. It's not something that happens overnight. I'm not claiming to be the most responsible person of all time, or even remarkably close. But as a journey and a learning curve and a, and a skill and, a, and an intention to, to build into your life and to cultivate, it's a, it's a really um, beautiful, creative, um, expansive opportunity for ourselves to um, take our power back in a very um, disempowering culture where we're looking outside of ourselves for our worth and our love and our capacity to choose. Your free will lies within. And so my reflection question is, you know, take stock. Oh, I love this phrase. I love saying it. I think it's going to be my new catchphrase for Quiggy Tube. Take stock. Take stock of how willing you are to take responsibility for yourself. When it comes down to, uh, you know, when we're all imperfect human beings, we all have nasty shit. We all have stuff that like make us difficult to deal with. Um, you know, take stock of, are you taking responsibility for yourself? Are you willing to look at yourself honestly and say, Hey, like, yeah, I, I do that. And furthermore, can I acknowledge that maybe there's a better way to do that? And further, furthermore, I want to take responsibility for the growth to do something different, to do it differently, to do it in a much better way. And I have the capacity to do that. And you do. So, you know, check in with yourself. How much of a, how much of a, of a victim mindset are you in? Because I spent a lot of time in victim mode. And again, this is separate from the reality that there are victims out there. A lot of us play the victim card when we're not actually victims. We just have it all twisted up and we think that the world around us is responsible for our happiness when in reality we are responsible for our happiness. Our inner responsibility is 
the frontier of the possibility for a joyous, less painful life. So take stock. Check in with yourself. Are you taking responsibility within? Are you taking responsibility for the thought patterns that you um, unconsciously choose to perpetuate? Are you taking responsibility responsibility for the emotional volatility you know and we we all come from you know a background of of being ill-informed and mistrained and so this is not to say that you're fucking up or that there's anything wrong with you but it's a it's a as I'm waking the fuck up and getting like a bit of a smack in the face I mean like I just had a shitty two weeks in a really beautiful relationship because I'm creating my own madness within and it's affecting our partnership and our intimacy. And so I've had to have a brutal awakening to the fact that I'm not taking responsibility for myself and it feels fucking empowering to recognize that I can and that I should and that I want to. So this is not to say, Hey, like, you know, you fucked up by creating all these, like, no, like we all have been dealt for the most part, shitty hands, you know, very few of us in my generation, um, hopefully more in the upcoming generations, you know, we're really dealt a, an upbringing that was loving and skillful and, you know, taught us how to take responsibility for our inside world. Not a lot of us have gotten that, certainly not in the Western world. So um, there's absolute compassion baked into this project of recognizing, you know, again, it comes back to that radical acceptance, that awareness piece and that love of like, damn, like I do this, you know, but I could do something different. So it's not about like shoving that down or repressing that or criticizing yourself because that just creates more of what you're trying to move away from. Um, it's about recognizing, bringing awareness, accepting and loving the parts of us that have, you know, been wounded and trained to, to act up and then to say, okay, I got to do something about it and I can, and you can, and I'm rooting for you. I'm really fucking rooting for you. I'm rooting for me. I'm working hard and it feels, it feels beautiful. It feels like such an opportunity to really upgrade and evolve and just live such a happier life knowing that I'm not so yanked by my circumstances. I have the capacity on the inside to be resilient in the face of suffering, to manage and eventually stop the, the patterns of rumination that cause me undue pain and suffering, and to lean into and create a more consistent state of happiness and joy, peace, creativity, openness, love, intimacy within myself. It's all possible. It's all possible for me. It's all possible for you. And Go out and fucking get it. Make it happen. It's a journey. I'm here with you. If you are curious where to start, you don't have a fucking clue, I want to help you. And that's not to say that we have to be a coaching coaching client relationship, but if you just want to reach out and ask a question or reflect something or comment here in the comments, please do because I it brings me joy to be able to comment on and, and guide. And it helps me be a better guide for myself because sometimes the, the wisdom comes out in the context of coaching and working with and reflecting for another. And it's a reminder and a, um, an emboldening of the wisdom that I must practice and follow myself. So please reach out, ask questions, make comments, um, argue a different point, whatever it is that floats your boat or that you're feeling like your voice deserves to be heard. And I would love to hear it. I love you. Have a dope day and Merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and any other, I don't know what other holiday, Halloween. Yeah. And 4th of July. 